Hypoglycemia is the common defining feature of all types of diabetes. However, depending on the etiology, the pathogenesis, the natural history and the treatment, diabetes can be classified into different types. If you look at the classification of diabetes, type 1 diabetes, which has a low prevalence, is commonly seen in children. It has an autoimmune pathophysiology. Type 2 diabetes, however, is much more commoner and is seen in about 90 to 95 percent. It is seen commonly in adults, however, it is much more commonly seen now in children and in adolescents. Hybrid forms are also commonly seen now. There are two types, the slowly evolving immune-mediated diabetes as well as the ketosis-prone type 2 diabetes. Hyperglycemia first detected in pregnancy are also of two varieties, gestational diabetes mellitus as, and also diabetes in pregnancy. There are few specific types of diabetes. First is the monogenic diabetes, endocrinopathy associated diabetes, disorders of exocrine pancreas associated diabetes, diabetes associated with infections and diabetes associated with drugs. There is also an unclassified type of diabetes where patients are put in until their type of diabetes is recognized and this is a temporary classification. Clinicians often find it difficult to diagnose their patients as type 1 or type 2. To help them with this, there are certain patients' characteristics to differentiate. In type 1, most patients are younger compared to type 2, where the patients are older, usually post-puberter. They usually have a stronger family history. Type 1 patients tend to have a lower body mass index, while patients with type 2 tend to be overweight or obese. They also tend to have features of insulin resistance such as acanthosis nigricans. Apart from that, patients with type 1 have an increased risk of developing diabetic ketoacidosis, whereas patients with type 2 have no risk of developing diabetic ketoacidosis. Apart from these clinical features, Biochemical evaluations too will help you in differentiating these two groups. Patients with type 1 will have low C-peptide levels, whereas patients with type 2 will have elevated or normal levels of C-peptide. Presence of autoantibodies in patients with type 1 will give us a clue on their presence of type 1 diabetes. Antibodies such as glutamic acid decarboxylase, GAD65 antibodies, islet cell antibodies, zinc transporter 8 antibodies, autoantibodies to insulin, autoantibodies to tyrosine phosphatase, IA2 and IA2 beta antibody presence will point to more towards a diagnosis of type 1, whereas the absence of these antibodies will point you towards type 2. However, in case where beta cell antibodies are not available to one, use of C-peptide levels about two years after the initial diagnosis will help you establish whether your patient has type 1 diabetes. The gold standard in this is to do a stimulated C-peptide level after a mixed meal tolerance test or a glucagon stimulation test. In this instance, if your C-peptide level is below 0.6 nanomoles per liter, it is more likely to be type 1 diabetes. In case you cannot do a stimulated test, an unstimulated fasting C-peptide level can be used. In this case, if your C-peptide level is below 0.2 nanomoles per liter, type 1 diabetes is likely. With that, let's talk about the hybrid forms of diabetes. This is when one cannot exactly diagnose if your patient has either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. That is because your patient has both features of 
type 1 and type 2 diabetes. There are two varieties. The first is the slowly evolving immune-mediated diabetes. In this form, your patient will have, will have autoantibodies, GAT65 autoantibodies in particular. Your patient will be above the age of 35 at the age of diagnosis, and there will be no need of insulin in the first year after diagnosis. The second would be the ketosis prone type 2 diabetes. In this type, there will be features of insulin resistance. However, typically at the presentation, the patient will have features of ketosis and severe insulin deficiency, but later on goes into remission, not requiring insulin. Subsequently, in the clinical course, the patient will closely resemble type 2 diabetes. Moving on to the specific types of diabetes, monogenic diabetes, although rare, carries an important type. In monogenic diabetes, there are two main types, monogenic defects in beta cell function and monogenic defects in insulin action. In monogenic defects, in the beta cell function, you will see a single gene mutation carrying a risk for diabetes in your patients. In this type, the common variety is maturity onset diabetes of the young, known as MODI. There are rarer types such as transient neonatal diabetes mellitus, permanent neonatal diabetes mellitus, and even rarer genetic syndromes such as MIDD or MID syndrome, as well as did mode syndrome, also known as wolf ram syndrome. In maturity onset diabetes of the young, uh, there are several genes being identified. GCK modi, which is a common type, is stable with non-progressive elevated fasting plasma glucose. This usually does not warrant treatment and is not associated with microvascular complications. This is why it is important to know the classification of diabetes where one can identify these patients and identify the requirement for monitoring and treatment. In contrast to this type of MODI, HNF1A and HNF4A type of MODI can be associated with microvascular complications. However, both these types are sensitive to sulfonylureas and classifying these patients into these types of diabetes can give valuable information to the clinician in selecting a molecule for treatment. Moving on to monogenic types of diabetes uh, with regards to defects on insulin action, such as leprechaunism, rabson mendelhall syndrome, and familial partial leopardystrophy, all of these are associated with insulin resistance. And all of these are autosomal recessive apart from familial partial lipodystrophy. Talking about the medications that can cause diabetes, glucocorticoids are the most common molecule that can cause diabetes. In addition, another commonly used molecule is thiazides. Apart from that, alpha adrenergic agonist, beta adrenergic agonist, pentamidine, which is an antimicrobial agent, Interferon alpha are also known to cause diabetes in individuals. Endocrinopathies can also cause diabetes in patients. Although these are rare, it is interesting to know these facts. Patients with acromegaly, with Cushing syndrome, thyrotoxicosis, patients carrying glucogonomas, pheochromocytomas, and somatostatinomas are at a high risk of having diabetes mellitus. And finally, in summary, there are several types of diabetes 
recognized in the current medical society. Type 2 being the commonest type. Patient characteristics will help clinicians identify type 1 and type 2 diabetes in patients. There are two hybrid forms of diabetes identified in patients. There are rare monogenic types of diabetes identified in patients which carry defects in beta cell function as well as insulin action. There are certain types of medications as well as endocrinopathies that can cause diabetes. I thank you. Thank you.